Welcome to EEB 109 video sessions brought to you by UCLA, where we condense seemingly overwhelming topics into manageable mini lessons. Today's topic will be on trophic cascades. So what's a trophic cascade anyways? Let's begin by breaking down its components. First off, how does the word trophic come into play? The word trophic is in reference to a food chain. A food chain is a linear sequence that shows which organisms consume which other organisms. Each link or level in this food chain is referred to as a trophic level, hence the word trophic. Now for the cascade part. The word cascade refers to the fact that if one were to manipulate either the top or bottom trophic level, the effects will echo or cascade throughout the rest of the food chain, hence the cascade. There are two types of trophic cascades. For this portion, we'll use concrete examples. For this first example, we'll use a simplified food chain where sea otters eat sea urchins and sea urchins eat kelp. If we were to remove sea otters from the system, we'll see an increased number of sea urchins because the sea urchins are now released from predation. With this increased number of sea urchins, we'll see a decrease in kelp forest due to, a sea, due to sea urchins feeding heavily on the kelp. This type of control is called top-down control because we've manipulated the top of the food chain and the effects are dealt to the trophic levels below. Top-down control typically results in an alternation in abundance at each trophic level. Now, for another example, we'll have a food chain where kittiwakes eat herring, herring eats zooplankton, and zooplankton eats plankton. In this example, we'll begin the cascade by decreasing the abundance of phytoplankton. With less phytoplankton, there is less food for the zooplankton. The zooplankton have less food to eat so their abundance will decrease. Likewise, less zooplankton will mean less food for the herrings and less herrings. And finally, less herrings will mean less food for the kittiwakes and less kittiwakes. This overall decrease in food at each level reduces the abundance of each animal at each trophic level. This type of control is called bottom up because we've manipulated the bottom of the food chain and its effects echo throughout the trophic levels above it. Bottom-up control tends to result in an overall increase or decrease in the abundance at each trophic level, depending on the change on the bottom-most level. In this example, we decrease the phytoplankton, so at every trophic level, we saw a decrease in abundance. So, there you have it. Trophic Cascades, simplified in a three-minute video. Thanks for joining us.